Now I'm looking like Slim Shady. Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Evan, and you know what today is? Today is Take Your YouTube Audience to Work Day. So I get the question quite a lot, what do you do for work? And I thought it'd be easier to just take my camera along and show you guys. Let me paint a picture for you guys. A year ago, I was very uncertain and very poor and just like didn't know what I was doing in life and was getting sick of the whole struggling artist thing. I was about to turn 30 and the whole starving artist thing was losing its cute factor. So I was thinking in my head, I have to make a change because again, I was working as a waiter and just I've always known that I can't work for a company. It's just not something I can like, it's not my personality. I wanted to work in a small business somewhere, but a lucrative one and small businesses these days are getting, well, less lucrative. So it was kind of like my options were limited. And then I got a tip that a precious metal dealer, gold, silver, platinum, rare coins, antique currency, collectibles, was looking for an apprentice. And I called this guy up and I begged him for a job and he hired me part time. And I created an eBay store for him because he's old and has like no technology sense. And I created an Instagram page for him. And over three months, it went so well, and I like I basically doubled his revenue. So he hired me full time, and I've been apprenticing with him ever since. So it's kind of the world's most interesting job. It's a little bit like Pawn Stars. We don't do Pawn, but like, like I said, I'm gonna bring my camera along. I have no idea what's gonna come in today. Anything from old silverware to old coins to old guns could come in. We usually don't buy guns, but I see them sometime. We open at 10 o'clock. It is currently 9.35 and I ride my bike there. I don't live very far away from where I work. So we're gonna finish this coffee, hop on my bike and go to the shop. Show you guys how secure this place is though. We got this big heavy door. You can't just open up. I have a garage door clicker in my pocket and I gotta buzz people in. So somebody comes and they ring the doorbell and then I'll buzz them in and then they gotta pull this heavy ass door that's bulletproof. First thing that I have to do every morning is check the eBay store and see what's gotta go out because I have to pack and ship everything we have. I literally set up the whole eBay store here. We have like 1,500 items for sale at any given time, which for me personally is kind of a lot to manage because like things are just spread out here. And we sell a lot of really just queer stuff that like I forget that I, I forget that I listed it because it'll be like six months before I sell it. Sometimes it takes me an hour to find stuff. So 1500 is kind of approaching the limit for the amount of items I want to be keeping track of. So we usually have 10 items or so going out per day and I try and list 10 items per day just to make it so that it's continuous. So this coin, which I bought yesterday from a lady for $35, I have listed for 75. The rule of thumb is I try and double my money on stuff. Uh, I have one offer for 45 and one offer for 56, and I'm going to decline both of them. It looks like this coin also has an offer, which I bought for 30 and I have listed for 55. This coin was signed by the engraver of the mint, John Mercantile. So this offers for $35, I'm going to decline that. eBay takes about 20%, so really it might seem like a good offer, but you have to think about that 20% when you accept anything, because it's possible to lose money on stuff without realizing it. There we go. This is an uncirculated coin set produced by the U.S. Mint. They make them every year. It's just an example of all the coins that they produced in that particular year. It comes with a special chip that tells you what mint it's from. Usually they'll give you in these things coins from all the mints that they make the coins from. So like this one's from 1978. It's got the Ike dollar. It's got a Kennedy half dollar, a penny, a dime, a nickel, and a quarter. Really it's a fundraising technique for the mint. These aren't really worth anything, but people pay for them for the collectability. And that's really all it's worth is collectability and novelty price. But we sell, as you can see, we buy a lot of these from the public and we sell a lot of them online. So this is my desk. This is where I list things on eBay every day. I'll show you the view out the window, but then you can figure out where I am. As you can see, I gotta list all this stuff today, but these are just bags of coins I gotta list. Mostly coins I have to list today. This pile over here, I've already listed. We bought these coins for 30 bucks each. I estimate we'll get 45 to 70 for each coin. I also, for my own safety, have to wear a firearm. 
So this is what I wear. It's a Smith & Wesson M&P 9mm. I just keep it on my belt. I also have the Knife of Knives. Of course, I don't show I have it, so I just keep it under my shirt. But before I do anything, I have to do my pull-ups. I'm not kidding. That's all you want. I do 100 a day. I break it up. The pre-64 ones are 90% silver. They're worth about six bucks. Otherwise, uh, the 1965s are 40% silver if they're half dollars. All right, so this is everything that's going out. Now I gotta pack it all up. This three cent piece from 1865 is probably the most interesting and I almost bought this for myself. And now I'm actually kind of regretting not buying it for myself. And my boss is a big game hunter, or I should say he was, and all of his taxidermy is all, like all over the store and there's some crazy stuff here. I actually made him take down most of it because I don't want to get us canceled. All right, now I've got the packages out for the mailman and I'll let the mailman in because of the virus. So now I go back to my desk. And now I'm gonna spend the next hour, I usually read. I either read something for pleasure or I read something to benefit my own knowledge. Either books about coins or right now I'm reading this book about gemology and gemstones. Really, this is just a lot like fishing. I'm sitting here, I have things I'm gonna list on eBay, but like I said, I have so many items for sale, I'm not gonna spend the whole day listing stuff like I used to. Really, I'm gonna just sit here and wait for somebody to walk through the door. We make most of our money from jewelry, but we also sell gold coins. We sell, as you saw, collectibles. The profits are nearly as good. In fact, we don't make very much money when we sell an ounce of gold. We'll do an ounce of gold. Today, the market price is $1,750, and I'm gonna try and get $1,900 an ounce. So that's a profit of $150 on one ounce, but I may not be able to get that. Uh, somebody who comes in might get fussy with me about that, and I'd rather just sell it and move it. This is one of those businesses where you wanna keep doing business, keep making profits, because the amount of money you have to put in like yesterday we spent almost forty thousand dollars buying stuff two large collections came in we bought both of them we paid cash like i had to walk this lady out to her car because she just had like literally a bag full of money and we turned around that same day yesterday and we sold it to another dealer for a profit it's kind of morbid but my rule of thumb is this isn't a pawn shop it's close anybody walking through the door to sell jewelry is either in a great financial position they don't need the money they just found something and they're looking to get rid of it or they inherited it and they don't know what to do with it they don't want it they just want to turn it into cash or in most cases they're not having a good day and they need money like their the car broke down they have bills to pay something's going on and they got a part with their jewelry in fact the silver chain that i'm wearing here i bought off a customer last week um i liked it so much i said look i'm not gonna i can't pay you very much because it's silver and silver is inexpensive side note you guys never buy silver jewelry new you're gonna pay hundreds of dollars for something that's worth like i said i bought this for 30 bucks and it's worth about 40 bucks so it's all a ripoff and sometimes i have to be the bearer of bad news to people that they overpaid on merchandise and sometimes people get really really pissed with me don't shoot the messenger and i'm gonna hope that somebody walks through the door and if they do we'll have some action to talk about and go over but there's a really good chance that i might just sit here all day there's days where literally nobody comes in and if it weren't for the ebay business then the shop wouldn't make any money so i pay for myself to be here and i cannot stress enough how much i enjoy doing this how goddamn interesting it is and just how great of an opportunity I've stumbled upon. Like the owner is one of the nicest people I've ever met and he gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. And it's like, I'm so fortunate to have found this. I've also been thinking a lot lately about, you know, if I had to do it over again, I wish I wouldn't have gone to college. I wish I would have just come here after I graduated because I'd have 10 years of experience now. Like I've learned a lot in a year, but I'm definitely a little disadvantaged from having just kind of jumped into this industry knowing nothing and kind of self-teaching and learning through observation. I mean, it's kind of just school of hard knocks. Like, you know, you learn on something like this. I mean, this wasn't my fault. It was the owner and I were looking at this together. And this, this is a good fake, this thing right here. I'll show you guys a little bit later an acid test. Oh shit, I'll show you guys right now. So we'll look at two items. We'll look at this chain and then we'll look at this diamond ring that I bought yesterday. So the chain came in and what we did and what you do is you make a mark on this granite block here and just rubs off some of the gold. And then you take the appropriate kind of acid, let's say 18 karat, you know, this is stamped 10 karat, and you'll dip it on. And if it eats away that mark, then it's not real. Now this is marked 10 karat and I used 18 karat, so even if that was real, it would still eat it away. But you guys can see here, let's make the mark again. This time I have 10 karat acid. 
and the mark holds. Now it holds because it has been dipped and dipped and dipped in real gold, but it's just a fine layer on the surface. You'd have to file into it to see that it's copper beneath it. So that fooled me to the tune of $1,600. So something like this, I mean, it's got some gold on it because it's coated in it. It's probably worth about a hundred bucks. Now this diamond ring came in yesterday. And the thing is, when these kinds of rings come in, jewelry is a ripoff. I imagine this cost somebody $2,000. I bought it for 350. It's 14 karat gold, but the stone itself is not great. I don't know if my camera can get close enough here. The stone has a yellow hue, and when you're looking into a stone like this, you want clarity. You don't want any kind of colors going on in it. So that tells me it's a lower quality stone. This was likely a jewelry store blowout. So, you know, doing stuff like this, like we get these jewelry collections that'll come in, 10,000 worth we'll buy and we'll sell it for 15. So, you know, if we could do that all day, we'd make a lot more money. But those kinds of things only happen once, twice, three times a week, max. And if there's one takeaway I can give you from this video, never ever buy brand new jewelry. It's a fucking rip off. You're gonna lose 90 to 95% of your investment, always. It's like buying a new car. I was about to have some business, but some people a sign on the door that said we won't let you in without a mask on and they left. Can't help you if you're not going to be safe. Documenting the day. Why not? But you're not. Uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's only me on camera. All right. So we got 16 Krugerrands golds at 1750 right now. So that's what I buy them at. Um, I just got to test all of them. Sure. Okay. So this is an industry standard tester. It's a $700 piece of equipment. And what we do since we have South African gold Krugerrand, which are obviously made by South Africa, we set it to Krugerrand. You hit run. And I gotta take each of these coins, it's one ounce of gold, put it here, and if it falls between the two brackets and it's good, you gotta do both sides. 16 ounces right here, and then we have these two gold pieces from the turn of the last century. And I actually have to look up the melt value on these ones. I can pay you 200 bucks for each of these ones. I literally have $28,000 in my hand right here. Um, I bought these at the market price. Before the virus, we were buying at $50 under the market price and selling at $50 over. But all the mints around the world are shut down right now, so it's really hard to get gold. Like they're just not producing more coins. So we'll pay market price now, just straight market price, and then we'll sell it for 100 to 150 over. However, because we have so much cash tied up just in this here in my hand, I have to sell all these today. And I don't know anybody, uh, any private buyer who's gonna wanna buy all these. Um, so I'm gonna just call another deal dealer and sell them to him. I've got somebody else walking in. You can come in. What's going on? Got some coins for sale. Okay. You can just set them down here. I'll take a look. So, forward. Yeah. This one is too new. Yeah. Maybe you need to go with somebody who goes to Europe. <laughs> 1972 is too new. You're not on camera. I'm uh, doing YouTube today. Oh, okay. I'm making a YouTube video about my job. Okay. So, you don't, that's what I did your hair, huh? <laughs> <laughs> for my YouTube audience? Yeah. yeah. You got to look the part, huh? 30 bucks. There she is. Yeah. See you, man. Wait, I'll see you later. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. He's a nice guy. We have a lot of regulars that come in here. Sometimes they come in every other day. Most of them spend money. Some of them come in here just to hang out and it kind of drives me a little nuts. What really drives me crazy, he did it a little bit. He didn't do it that bad. When I've done my business with somebody, I have concluded my business with them and I'm about to go sit back down and then they see something else and then they want to start a new process of inquiring a price. They almost never buy anything, but like, it's like a consumer version of a Minnesota goodbye. They can't just leave. They have to touch this and look this and look at that and ask questions about this and that on their way out the door. It's never just as simple. Okay, thank you, see you later. All right, so I just got a hold of the other dealer and he's gonna be coming at three and it's 12.30, so two and a half hours, I'm gonna sell all that gold that I bought. How you doing? You wanna see world coins? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a bucket of world silver coins. They're from all over the world and there are various amounts of silver. Some of them are as little as 50%, some are as much as 92. So the customer I have here is interested in these three. We just do a blanket $15 an ounce on these. It's exactly 1.1 ounces. So we'll call it 16 bucks. I actually just got a phone call. One of my friends is gonna be coming to hang out with me. That's the joy of a small business is I can have friends here. So he will be joining me shortly. Good, all's well. Do you do most of your business 
walk-ins or is it or on ebay yeah on, on ebay too? yeah um the real business we do in the store is just high volume stuff with the other dealers do you know evan was the youngest ever black belt in minnesota in kumdo that's true who me in kumdo which is sword fighting really yeah he also ran the fastest mile for like the eight, the eight year old that I did not do, but I appreciate you glorifying my <laughs> I didn't actually know you got my exploits as a youth. Either. No, I literally was the youngest Kumbo black belt in Minnesota, yeah. Soda, nice. probably ever, because I was I, think I was 18 or 17 when I got it. Yeah. All right, you have 20 coming back. You think you get a, a, a top? Yeah, I yeah, could do that. Or top or. Casey told you that story before. A version of it. So some people come in every day, and that gentleman is one of them. Mm. And every day. Every day. Wow. Literally every day, Sergey. Looks at the same cases. And he looks at the same cases, and he asks the same questions. He's a nice guy. Isn't this fun? My friend Mike has come to visit me at work. Nostrovia. Take your YouTube audience to work day, and your friends come and visit you yeah. at work. Hey, I am your number one fan. I bought all the merch. Or I can say site. for most of you. Yeah. Not all of you, though. But all the merch four times. I also bought. I'm the number one buyer of all of his books. Okay. I'm not gonna correct you on the air. <laughs> uh, what, Mike, did you think when I told you that I was coming to work here and I was doing this? I mean, it's a step up from serving, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're uh, more sober, so that's good. That's true, I'm yeah. not drinking every day. And uh, you're really into it too, yeah. so. That's yeah, a good thing. I think it was probably a good thing too. What do you think is the most ridiculous thing I have told you about this? Like most, something you can remember that I told you, like, oh my God. Customers, regular, like a lot of the regular customers. Yeah. The guy who just came in here and said he went to a village in Russia and found a wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the customers, oh, and then the guns. And the guns. The guns are a lot of fun, but. That's one word for it. Appreciate you coming to visit me. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Evan. We're not drinking. And so my friend just took off and I've got 20 minutes before uh, the dealer's stopping by to buy all this gold. So I guess I'll be productive for 20 minutes. What can I do for you today? Well, I'm just looking for um, generic silver, um, one ounce coins. Sure. Or it's gonna be- Do you have like- uh, This tray here, these are $21 each. 21 bucks each? Yes, okay. sir. What, what is the spot price right now? 17 and a half. Is that what it is, 17, yeah. $17? Yeah, the premiums right now are crazy. Do you have like a silver bar, like a five ounce? I don't. You don't have any ounce? That's all I got right there. Three nines. Oh, sounds like silver to me. I actually have never seen these these particular ones. Obviously they're modeled after an Indian head yeah. scent. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'll see you again. Yep. So that was a construction worker who just got his paycheck, and I see a lot of them on Fridays. Construction workers will come in here and convert some of their paycheck into precious metal. Okay, so we're gonna do some items on eBay. So I'll teach you guys something kind of interesting about coins. Coins are like golf. With golf, you play the ball as it lies. With coins, as you have found a coin when you're buying it, is, is the condition of the coin. You cannot do anything to enhance it. You can't clean it. You can't even take a tissue to it. If you do a professional grader, because you can get coins graded by these, there's two main services. There's PCGS, Professional Coin Grading Services, and NGC, Numismatic Guarantee Corporation. Those are the two main graders. And if they come across a coin, because you send your coins into them to be graded, that's the only way you can get your coins graded. They're like, they're the only official experts with coins in terms of grading. If they detect anything nefarious with a coin that's been done to enhance it at all, they won't grade it. They'll send it back to you and they'll stamp it as ungradable. As you find a coin is the condition that coin will be forever. So like something like this, this Morgan Silver dollar right here. This is an uncirculated, or a BU, brilliant uncirculated dollar. So this has never been used as money. This sat in a treasury vault probably for about 80 years, and then a collect, it was sold to the public, and then like a collector got their hands on it, and probably just kept it in a, a bank vault or something for a long time. We bought this from a private collection. All right, so we're gonna list this Morgan Silver dollar that I bought yesterday. Morgan silver dollars are probably my favorite US coins. They were made from 1878 to 1904, and again in 1921 for one year. 
They were not very popular when they came out, mainly because of their size. They were mainly made so that the United States could demonstrate that they held the precious metal in their reserves, in their treasury vaults. But most of these coins, when they were minted, they went into treasury vaults and they would sit there for long periods of time. So most of them are uncirculated. So when people say, oh, I have an uncirculated coin, it must be worth a lot of money because it's old. Most of these coins are uncirculated. It's just, it's a set, it's a 70 point grading scale. Really, I shouldn't even be touching this with my, with my bare hands. This is probably a 63 out of 70, which is a pretty common grade for an uncirculated coin like this. This coin's probably worth about 50 bucks. This is a 1902 New Orleans. So this was from the New Orleans Mint when that was a thing, and it was made in 1902. People who call and ask if we're open when I answer the phone. No, I'm just hanging out here because I have nothing better to do. 4.15, we're nearing the end of the day, so now I'm gonna clean up. Are you recording something? Yeah, I'm making a YouTube video out of what I do. Oh, cool. Okay, so the first thing we have is we have this, I got a bunch of stuff. We've oh boy. got old Rolex. Yeah, that looks real all right. Guess what? So that looks real all right. So we've got a Rolex oh, watch cool. here. This I'm gonna have to look up. And some gold and stuff. This is an emerald with uh, approximation receipt here for $14,000. Where? I don't see a stamp anywhere. 14 carat here. Looks like this watch band is also 14 carat. We're gonna weigh it. 2.5 ounces. I would be a buyer of this stuff at 25. Okay, now we're gonna check out this gold. 72.9. It's about this lady's Rolex. I bought it for 600. It's got like, as you can see, been heavily worn. I'm hoping to sell it on eBay for a thousand. And I don't see many Rolexes. In fact, most of the Rolexes that come in here are fake. This is 113.38 grams of 14 karat gold. So to calculate that, 14 karat is 58% pure. So 113.38 times 0.58 leaves me with 65.7 grams of gold here, times $55 for melt. So there's $3,616 in gold right here. So we get our money back just right here. This is 14 karat. There's like some diamonds right here. Uh, when diamonds are this small, you usually just don't buy the diamonds. You just buy it for the gold. I bought this for 850. Well, I guess let's figure out exactly. There's 44.9 grams here. 26 total grams of gold. $1,432 on a melt value, and I bought it for $8.50. The silver, I paid pretty close to the market price. I'll probably get 30 bucks, so there's probably about a $5 profit here. So now it's the end of the day. I was kind of starting to break down those prices, and then the other dealer came. Uh, all those gold coins that I bought this morning, the $28,000 worth of coins, we sold them for $5 over, because the market price has changed during the day. That is the problem with this business, is the markets go up and down, so we still profited, but we had to sink $28,000 to make $90. However, the jewelry that I just bought, uh, the dealer just literally took everything off my hands from it. So this was a very successful day. And like, as you guys can see, this is a fucking lucrative business. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure you're following me on social media, at Evan Kale. I might do more videos about my occupation, but if you guys have any questions about this business, put them in the comments below. Get my merchandise, there's links in the comments, and I will see you guys later.